zig zag. Now you can make a few of these, you can make the tails really long. They won't work very well if you make them exactly even. You have to pretty much make one side longer than the other. See, they're all different distances. Now, very good. Now this is a great exercise for learning how to see where parallel is. Uh, you can see my first line is parallel with this line or the edge of the paper. But you can see that this line is what we call an oblique. It's not parallel with the edge of the paper. What I want you to do, because we're very much interested in seeing things in 3D, is I want you to construct some short little lines to begin with that are parallel with the sides of the paper. So all the lines I'm going to do are going to be short and they're all going to run off the edge or the point of each line and they're all going to be parallel with the edge of the paper. And the reason we're doing this exercise is because the oblique lines or the lines on an angle are the ones that are coming up next when we draw in 3D. Now, here's a little rule. If it goes down and comes to one of the oblique lines or lines on an angle, uh, you have to stop. So I could make this a little bigger. Just try and make them the same size and continue. Oh, I think I got to stop there because there's a line. And there we go. And this one, well, we'll do this one anyways. It's going to be, well, it kind of turns into a, an envelope. So now we want to talk about parallel again. Each of these lines has to be parallel. And in actuality, they would converge, but we're going to just make them parallel. And it's, where is it aiming for? It would be aiming for here, but we just stop it there because we can't see it there. Now, if you, if you find it easier, put it, your, your paper on an angle. Just remember, basically you're aiming for this spot behind this wall. So if it happens to slant a bit, it's great. But right now we're concentrating on making these two lines, the top and the bottom, mirror each other or be more or less parallel. Now this line is slightly curved. You see it's not really straight. So I keep my eye on this line and I bring this over and there's a slight curve to it. They don't have to be exactly perfect. Uh, so, you know, I tend to do it fast and have a little fun with it. Zigzag, flick, 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 flick. And we can boost it up to the next level. If you've got that one, just remember, zigzag, straight down, straight down, straight down, straight down. Here's a great one now. Now what we do, is we make a series of these like that. And you play around and practice these little doodle lines and get good at them. And remember, they don't have to be perfect, just approximate. And you've got a nice long ribbon, but what if you get that and you want to go to the next line, which is, I call it 77. These are, these are really like sevens. It's just that we give them a tail and call them a zigzag or a Z. Z. So 77 goes like this. You make a seven, make sure it's long, and then you put another seven that hooks in here but doesn't touch. Then you make another seven, and another seven, and another seven. And they're all sevens. And now we follow the rule. The rule for this design is going to be Everything that comes from the little point has to go parallel with the side of the paper. And that's the first rule we're going to use. And here we go. So down, 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 down. Each little edge comes down unless it touches another line. Then it has to stop. It's like a game. Down, down, down. And now we do the edges down, down. Notice I'm just giving a, a uniform flick of about this long. 
unless it hits a line and then I'm a little slower and make sure it touches. So are there any lines I didn't touch? No, nope. looks good. Okay, now these ones, whatever this is, wherever direction this is going, put a little one in here. Whatever direction this is going, put it in there, put it in there, put it in there. Even if it goes a little crooked, straighten it out. You know, don't get frustrated with these, just keep doing them until you master the idea. Of course, 3D drawing is all about curves and shapes and depth. Taking shapes, making them into other shapes. And also because of our exercises, our developmental drawing exercises, round and round, up and down, back and forth, zigzag, 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 wiggle, 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 and dot, 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 we are able to get some good lines. So here's the next exercise. It's going to be focusing on this, and it's a little bit of a twist from something you were taught probably in grade three. Early on, we learned this little trick. Maybe your dad or mom showed you, your big brother, someone at school. You draw a little square or rectangle, and then you put a little thing here behind it, and then you join these up, and you go around showing everybody that you can draw in 3D. And in a manner of speaking, it's true. You can draw in 3D, but you are missing two things. You don't see 3D, and you're not able to think 3D. All it is is a little trick. I could train an elephant or a monkey to do that trick. So there's no merit in little tricks like this until you understand what the trick is doing. Let me show you how to really show them a trick. We take the first thing we learned, which is this little box. We put another box behind that. And then we put more boxes in and we keep making them smaller and smaller. Why do we do it smaller and smaller? Because in dimensions, things are close and things are far away. So, and what I want you to do is just keep it going until it's, you know, you can't see it anymore and it turns into a little sort of a dot at the end. There we go. We have 5,000 pieces of paper. Now, this is the first level. So all you have to do is join up every single one and don't be uh, worried if they're a little crooked in places, but continue the exercise right to the end until you've joined up every single one. And you'll notice that we get less accurate as we go back. And there we go. We have created, or it could be a, a snake coming forward. We've created some depth into the picture plane. You see, we really are magicians. This is just a flat piece of paper, but I'm creating depth into the picture plane. The picture plane is just right here, what we see. Very good, that's an easy one. Here's a level two. This time, I'm going to use my little flicking method like that, rather than trying to draw precise squares or rectangles. And when I've done three, uh, maybe four, I'm going to head over to the bottom of one and continue the pattern this way. So I've changed the direction of my squares. And now they're going like this. And of course, as I join these up, I will begin to get, oh, I changed directions here, so I have to be careful which ones, which ones show. There we go. I'm back in the race. Uh, what this will show you is how to make things foreshortened. That means things coming, when things come towards you like this, they're foreshortened. If we look at the pencil like this, that's simple to understand and draw. But when I put the pencil like this, 
that's four shortened and it becomes a little more difficult. So the reason why this is good is it teaches us how to go in and out of the picture and forward. I could bring this right up like this. If I had a big one here and had done a few more, you'll notice that they will start to come forward more. Whoa, this could be for Chinese New Year, like a dragon. And I can bring that twisted in here and twisted back. So this little exercise with the little boxes, I'm not going to show you all the variations, but it's fun and it can be like a puzzle. Like if I do it like that, which ones go with which? Well, that one goes there, that one goes there, that one goes there. And sometimes you can get confused and have to start over. But um, I think I'll join this one to this one. And then that one would be going here. So you have to think it out, see? Now I've got something, oh, it looks, hey, look. Hey, this is cool. It looks, uh, this could be a marimba. I could have changed that one to here. There we go. And these could be little hands on the end. And here's his little legs down here. And he could be carrying something. Do you see what I mean? Like, these are great little imagination boosters. You need to be able to think, see, and draw in 3D. This is the folded paper exercise. And it's quite simple. All you have to do is draw a zigzag on your paper like this. Just going across, simple zigzags. I'm going to draw one there and I'm going to draw a really simple one here. It looks like a Z. So you get the hang of this. Now you're going to put a little dot down here and you're going to take everything in the front down to here. Not these ones, but just the ones in front. Then you're going to take the ones behind, and you're not going to see that one, but you definitely would see this one. Aim for the little dot. Aim for the dot. Aim for the dot. And there you go. For this one, it's a little easier because there's only a few and you can see they all come in here and you only have one to do there. These are great little exercises. But what if I put one in behind here? I'm still going to be aiming for the little dots, see? These are called lines of convergence. And for the games that we're doing here, you just keep, make sure your line is pointing to the little dot here. And of course, there's nothing here because you can't see it. I'm going to bring another one. I'm going to bring it through here, over here. Um, yeah, I think I'll put a little bit in there and stop it there. Now, okay, we're going way down here. So that one goes to there and that one and that one and that one and that one. Pretty soon, you can build this and get it very complicated. and shade it. You have to just see where you're shading. You shade it all the right hand side or left hand side. This is the 6B pencil. Just putting a little shading in. And you can also put a little shading in here too if you want. Use your finger to shade out things. Pretty cool stuff. You can use colored pens and make them different colors. It's almost like your own little doodle board, but you're using perspective and do look at it the other way. Here's the spinning coin. You start here with an ellipse. Keep your arm moving. Don't throw those old Sharpies out. Keep them. They're called dullies. Notice all the ellipses are going to here. They're all going in the same point. This is called the spinning coin. And when it's finished, it looks like a coin spinning on the table. And you want to get right down to 180 degrees. We can add one more here. And one more. 
See the coin is spinning. And the trick in this one is to get mastery of your ellipses. So everyone has a best, the best way to go. Mine's this direction. And there's the spinning coin. Ellipses are very important to draw. Okay, so ellipse. Lift it, pull it, lift it, pull it, lift it, pull it, lift it, pull it. See, that elliptical shape in all directions is the best thing for you to practice.